Thank you very much, Georgia. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to give a keynote presentation here. I'm from China, but I'm working in State K Laboratory of Jihad Prevention and the Joint Winter Protection, SKLGP. It's in Chengdu University of Technology. And uh, I, I'd like to give a presentation of uh, understanding uh, the mechanism of large-scale landslide triggered by strong earthquake. As you know, China is a country strongly affected by earthquake, and uh, there are a lot of active faults and a lot of active area, geological active area. So in recent 100 years, we met a lot of time strong earthquakes, and we can find a lot of landslide, huge landslide, triggered by strong earthquake. So this map shows uh, uh, active tectonic and uh, strong earthquake in China. So as you know, the, the collision between India plate and the Eurasia plate is, uh, I think, is the most significant event in geological history on the Earth's surface in recent uh, uh, history of the Earth. So this kind of collision not only uh, allowing the uplifting of Tibet plateau and uh, also routing a lot of uh, active folds around the Tibet plateau. So you can see the, these are active folds around the Tibet plateau and uh, strong earthquake points along the strong uh, active folds. And also, uh, it shaped the, the topography of China landform, so you can see from west to east, uh, from Tibet Plateau, it's the highest uh, position, highest uh, currency. The average elevation is 4,500 meters. And the second step is uh, here, Yangtze Plate. And the third step is uh, east uh, uh, flatland. So it shows three steps. So this is a basic shape wrought by tectonic backgrounds in this area. So you can see along the uh, Tibet Plateau, there are most active fault area and the uh, most concentration of uh, strong earthquakes. Because during the congregation of two big plates, this area was compressed very strong, and uh, Yangtze plate is a very strong plate and a ratchet plate. It will route in very developed active folds on the strong earthquake. So, uh, based on this uh, background, so you can see both land sites distributed on the position of the Currency change. So you can say from first step to second step, there are a concentration area, I'm sorry, concentration area of large scale land sites. And in this area, so far, we have identified several concentration, land site, uh, uh, concentration area of land sites triggered by strong earthquake. So, as shown in this map, in my presentation, I will mainly introduce the lowest one and this one. And this one is in Lewis area. It's a soil landslide triggered by strong earthquake area. And this one is uh, mostly rock slides. So, This is a, this is a, a high red landslide area. And this area is a, a huge earthquake occurred in 1920, it's 100 years ago, almost 100 years ago. It's 1920. The magnitude of the earthquake is 8.5. And the highest density is in level, is 12, according to the term of Chinese Bureau, uh, Earthquake Bureau. And uh, the area of the 
uh, uh, heavy da damage area is uh, 200 square kilometers. So in this uh, huge disaster, uh, about 2,000, uh, 230,000 people were killed and 500 million thousand buildings co collapsed. So this is a damaged area of the strong earthquake. And uh, you can see most land site concentrated in, this is the active fault, this earthquake fault, but most land site concentrated in southwest part of the earthquake fault. So according to our investigation, this is because in this area, there are the six of noise. So this is, this is a prone area for landslide to occur. And uh, according to our investigation, in 500 landslide, half of the landslide are large scale landslide. That means the volume is from 1 million to 10 million cubic meters. So, a very interesting phenomenon is this, the landslide in this area triggered by a strong earthquake has a very low apparent freakish angle. So you can say this is a general, for general large scale landslide, the freakish angle is 17, but for the landslide in, trigger, in this area, it's only 11. So maybe this is because high, high mobility of the noise landslide, but according to our observation, this is because the sleep surface is, has a very low sleep surface angle. So you can say the sleep angle is almost horizontal or several, or only several degrees. So the apparent friction angle is only about three degrees. And the run out distance is not so long, it's 550. So it's not high mobility. And uh, according to proof, the maximum of this such kind of land, we have a lot of observation. And the most important finding is we think this kind of phenomena is due to liquefaction, liquefaction of the noise. So this is the noise, except for it's yellow, it has a big porosity and a lower density. So you can see from microscope, you can see a lot of uh, big pores. This is the original noise. So this table shows the basic parameter of the nerves, and also show uh, lower density, big pores, and it's kind of a sealed soil. So we did a liquefaction testing, and we found most of the sample were liquefied during testing. So we took the sample to uh, 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 observa uh, do the observation of a microscope, so this is before testing, this is after testing. So before testing, you can see a lot of big pores. This is the pores. And after testing, most pores collapse and the pores become smaller and smaller. So this curve shows uh, the shear stress during liquefaction. It decreases it decrease very sharply with the decreasement of big pores. That means because of the collapse of big pores, the permeability of the nerve soil decreased very much, and that result in liquefaction of the noise. But this is only a case. Another case shows a, a totally different uh, 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 situation. This is another one it calls Dang Jia Cha landslide. And this land this landslide is also in noise, but it run a very long distance. So run out is exceptional. So this is a, 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 it's also a very uh, gentle friend. The land form is less than five degree, and the run out distance is about 3,000 kilometers. So it's quite different from the gentle liquefaction landslides. 
and the parent French angle is also very low. So you also observe the debris totally decomposed, and uh, it show floor-like deposition feature. So it's a problem. It's a question why it has such a high mobility. And the next area I will introduce is uh, Wenchuan earthquake. You know, this is 2008. It's a very huge disaster. And the magnitude of the earthquake is 8 magnitude. So this map shows a large scale land size triggered by this strong earthquake. It totally triggered about 107 large scale land sites, and most of them distribute along the earthquake fault. So most large scale land site in rocks, in rock slope shows the feature like this. It has a very steep back scarp and a very gentle, very gentle low angle shear surface, surface in the front of the, of the land site. And this is a very typical one. I think this is, a, this is the biggest, large, and this is the largest, uh, biggest land site in the world in this 100 years occurred in, on the Earth. So we call it Da Guan Bao, and you can see it's an amazing volume. The total volume is 1.3 billion cubic meters. So this is a back view from the top of the mountain. You can see this is the debris body. And uh, the dam, the height of the dam, is almost 600 meters high. And this is the up boundary, this is the lower boundary, and the lower boundary developed along the local birds. And uh, the total length is uh, 4 kilometers, and the width is 2 kilometers. So this is the front view. You can see the back scarp is very steep and show rough, roughly. So the height is 800 meters. It's incredible, such a steep cliff, like a wall before you. So uh, we, in recent years, we have done a lot of uh, very detailed geological map. This is the map of the, of the land site. Uh, and uh, we did the cross-section. This is a, uh, a cross-section shows uh, rock strata. And this is a cross-section shows uh, in this direction. So the steep surface seems to along the rock birds, but uh, the rock birds deep upward, deep upstream, and uh, this is just a parent direction. So it's like a huge wish. This is a cross section. This is a downstream boundary. This is an upstream boundary. So it's like a big jaw from so this is a total map of the sleep surface. So you can see uh, the red area is the sixth uh, uh, depolition area of the depth uh, of the length of the body. This is a, uh, a typical cross section. You can see this section uh, totally uh, uh, sliding uh, slide uh, along the uh, uh, rock street. And uh, this one, you can see uh, the sleep surface cannot come out cannot outcroup on the surface of the slope. So it should cut through the rock street in the front of the slip surface. And uh, so we can give a, a, a 3D a, a DEM map. It shows a cut through area of intact rocks. So it's not totally sleep along rock street. Only partially, mostly sleep along rock birds. But in the front part, there is a cut through section of the. So uh, the total, the intersection of the slip surface is only 15 degrees. And this is the model we, uh, uh, we conclude for this kind of landslide. Firstly, it has a very uh, steep and high back scarp, so it shows tensile cracking. And secondly, sliding along local birds. And uh, thirdly, it will cut through the local birds in the front of the land side. So this is the basic model for such kind of land side in this area. And it, it dominates the, the type of the, of the land side in this area. So we have following question. What factor control the occurrence of such kind of land side? And what result in 
the friction or shear resistance suddenly drop in the slip zone. So firstly, let's see the boundary of the land side. Actually, the boundary always along the region line of the mountain. So, of course, we think the slope structure, the local bears, is the most important control factor. But we find another one is the topography. It's a very special to topography for this kind of land size. So you can see this is a sweet uh, DEM, and the boundary is uh, along, from, along the, the, the ridge area, ridge line of the, mount, of, the, of the mountain. So in order to prove the, the significance of the topography, we install a lot of uh, seismography in uh, another area. We want to understand the dynamic response of the, uh, of the slope during earthquake. So this is the Qing Chuan, and this is the Q1, Q1 station, Q2 station, and the Q, uh, Q, uh, this is the Q0 station. So this is a, a polar diagram of uh, US, uh, US uh, uh, intensity. So it shows in, at, this uh, at this position because it's a flat land, so no directional effect. In every, it, shows, it shows elliptical or round shape of the Earth's uh, energy. But uh, in this po position, under this position, this is the top of the mountain, and it shows cook corn shape and show very obvious directional effect for the dynamic of response of earthquake. So we calculate, we take the uh, Q0 as a base, as a reference, and uh, calculating the ratio between Q1, Q2, and, Q, and, and Q0, we can calculate the amplification amplification at this special area. So we get the amplification factor was between four to seven. And the direction is perpendicular to the ridge, to a ridge line. So this is, a, I, we think this is an important finding because that explains why the fracture, the boundary of the land side always occur along the ridge. Places. And we find a lot of such common things in this area. And uh, secondly, why the friction angle or shear resistance, resistance drop very suddenly in the slip zone? We find the, uh, actually uh, the slip zone is uh, existing shear uh, fault along rock bears. But we found, uh, also find new fragmentation of the slip bears. And uh, this is uh, uh, the slip zone construction of the, uh, of the land side. You can see from the top to the bottom, from fine coarse to coarse green, to uh, gra pressure, to gravel, to fragmentation ro fra fra fragmented rocks. So we find, we find, sorry, so a lot of green, uh, particles in the slip zone show friction fractures. And these friction fractures obviously was resulted by strong earthquake. And uh, we also found the density in slip zone change. This is the, this is the basic line. It shows the uh, density of uh, existing fault show, fault zone. And this one is uh, the density of the slip zone. So we can see the density of the slip zone decrease about 20 to 30 percent. That means data tensing occur in the slip zone during earthquake, during strong earthquake. We also uh, observed in this area the vertical vibration, especially along the earthquake fault also very high. It's almost equal to the horizontal vibration as a PGA of the, uh, in this area. 
So this is a, a ratio between vertical to uh, horizontal. So you can say it's almost the same. Vertical vibration and horizontal vibration. And they were also observed in, the, in this area, some houses, you can say, this is the first floor, but the second floor disappeared. Why? You can say the, t the second floor totally crushed, disappeared. So we think vertical vibration play a very crucial, important role during the uh, fragmentation of the sleep zone. And uh, it's like a, 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 a mob effect, a punching mob, we call it as a punching mob effect. So we did a simulation to this kind of phenomena, and we found this is a curve shows the density, a variation. We can say in 50 seconds after the earthquake, the sleep zone show high latency during because of vibration. So this is a very strange phenomenon during the complete, during the vibration because of the vertical vibration, the latency, the density is not become compressive, but uh, swelling and dilating. Uh, del uh, uh, so according to this uh, phenomena, we can give some uh, uh, hypothesis and uh, assumption. And the first one is uh, uh, because of the delicacy of the sleep zone, zoning friction may occur due to the delicacy and the swelling of the sleep zone and the friction will be dropped dramatically. And the second is the delicacy of the sleep zone will produce a sudden increase of poor water pressure. So it will result in the sharp, very sudden drop of the, the shear resist, resistance. And the third one is the friction coefficient along the sleep surface will be decreased sharply due to high speed motion and the sudden increase of temperature. Now we are studying which one is the most possible. So maybe we have other possibilities. So let's go to conclusion. Those and its special properties are the key reason of unusual and unique performance expected by the landslide triggered by, triggered by 1920 high wind earthquake. Even though we try to understand more, there still exists a lot of undiscovered things behind. The high porosity and the, the sudden collapse of big pores in Earth during strong earthquake is a fundamental reason of noise, liquefaction, and lower angle sleep surface appearance. And number three, a large number of uh, accruing uh, seismic data at uh, Qingchuan uh, City analysis shows that the uh, ERS uh, energy maxima had obviously orientation uh, effect with the cone, core shaped and elliptical value. These phenomenal findings have important implication to the evaluation of slope seismic dynamic directional effect and amplification effect. Fragmentation under the delicacy of the sleep zone during the earthquake may result in sudden drop of the sleep surface friction. It may be the basic reason for Daguang Bell giant landslide to be initiated. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>